let us understand one important topic of SAP data services that is data services scripting language. It is for providing coding within data services. Every ETL tool allows developers to include code within their data flows. Example, Informatica ETL tool supports Java programming language. Microsoft SQL Server integration services supports two languages C Sharp and Visual Basic. Microsoft Power BI supports Power Query and our SAP Data Services supports two languages, scripting language and Python language. So Python programming also we can include inside SAP Data Services. But currently our main focus is scripting language. SAP Data Services scripting language allows us to implement programming features within jobs, workflows, data flows and transformations. Simple programming features like operators, constants, variables, functions, expressions. In fact, expression is combination of variables, constants, operators and functions. Example, A plus B is an expression. If the value of A is 10, B value is 20, then the value of the expression is A plus B is 30. So, expression always represents a single value. Expressions are created with the variables, constants, operators and functions. Along with these, simple control statements and uh, exception handling features are available in data services scripting language. Let us see the syntax of uh, scripting language. First, keywords and variables. These are not case sensitive. That means you can create a variable upper, with uppercase letters and later you can use the variable with the lowercase letters. Comment lines also we can include within script, but they should begin with the hash symbol. Every statement ends with the semicolon. Delimiters for string constants are single quotes. So on both sides of uh, string constants, we should provide a single quotes. Double quotes are not allowed. Within string constant, backslash symbol can be used for character escaping. If any character is not allowed inside your string constant, then you can mention that character along with the backslash. Example, it is not possible to keep a single quote within a string because the string is already delimited by single quotes. So another single quote we cannot maintain directly as part of the string. In such cases, we can use backslash single quote within the string so that that single quote also will become part of a string. This is called a character escaping. Variables names should begin with a dollar symbol. Global variables should be defined at a job level. Next, string interpolation. It can be achieved with square brackets or braces. String interpolation also known as variable interpolation. It is nothing but keeping the values of variables and expressions, not only simple variables, complicated expressions with the operators and functions also we can maintain and the result of those expressions can be included within the string directly without concatenation operator. That is what is string interpolation. The difference between square brackets and braces is when you use square brackets, the value of expression will be included within the string only value. Whereas braces will add single quotes on both sides for the value. And a keyword for null values in uh, scripting is null. It is a value of type integer. Delimiters for statements blocks are begin end. So if you want to combine several statements into one single block or a group, we should use the keywords of begin and user defined function should return a value by written keyword. This is mandatory. A written keyword is mandatory in user defined functions definition. And three types of parameters we can pass to user defined functions input parameters, output parameters, and in out parameters. In out parameters means input output parameters. They can act like both input and output parameters. Now let us see 
operators that are supporting by scripting language. All basic operators like assignment operator, arithmetic operators, string concatenation operator to join the strings, and a logical operators for preparing the conditions. These are simple logical operators and advanced logical operators like is null, is not null also will be supported by scripting language. Next, variables. We can create three types of variables. Substitution variables or substitution parameters, global variables, local variables. Substitution parameters are repository level variables. So, if you create a variable as substitution variable that can be used in many jobs, not only in those jobs, within the jobs, in other objects like workflows, data flows, transformations also we can use. So, these are like top level variables, substitution parameters are top level variables and also global variables, local variables are also possible. Global variables we create at a job level, individual job level. So, that only within the job we can use those variables. Since these are job level global variables, they can be used inside other objects of the job like workflow, data flow and transformations. Whereas, local variables are purely local to one object. Example, if you create a variable as local variable within a job, it can be used only inside the job, not within the workflow, data flow and transformations of the same job. Similarly, if you create a local variable within a workflow, that can be used only within the workflow. In the subsequent object like data flows and transformations, we cannot use. And these variables names are not case sensitive. You can use any casing to create the variable and also to access the variable. Global variables at job level should be provided with a default value. Variables names begins with a dollar character, whereas substitution variables begins with a two dollar symbols. And we can create variables, global variables, local variables, and even substitution variables also from tools menu. In data services designer, we can find a tools menu. There we can find options for creating variables and also substitution parameters. And uh, Scripting is supporting three control statements. If statement for implementing true-false logic, while statement is for implementing looping logic, try-catch statement is for exception handling. And generating the output from scripting. If you generate any output, that will be displayed in the job log. And output can be generated with the print function. Print function accepts only one parameter as input and it should be of type character. If you are trying to display the value of any variable through print function, it should be converted into character. You can use string interpolation also. String interpolation is better than using conversion data types or using concatenate operator. Without the help of a string concatenate operator, Without the help of data type conversion functions, any variable value or multiple variable values we can combine together and we can display through print function by using string interpolation. Now let us see the functions in scripting. There are two types of functions, user defined functions and library functions. User defined functions are the functions that we can created by the developer, those are called custom functions and the library functions are predefined functions developed by SAP. There are so many categories of library functions, data type conversion functions, numeric functions, string functions, date functions, aggregation functions and others. Now let us see the examples of scripting, scripting recipes. First assignment statements. Here two examples of assignment statements we have. You can see the assignment operator equal is used. Assignment statements are used to assign values to variables. Example, the string value Coca-Cola is assigning to a global variable GV underscore company name. 
every statement is ending with a semicolon. So these are assignment statements. Similarly, print function. You can pass only one parameter to print function. So here we are trying to display a company name value. Whereas here, company name global variable value we are concatenating to the string company name is. So string constant and string variable value. Both will be combined together into one single string that will be displayed by print function. But instead of using concatenate operator, we can use string interpolation. So square brackets we are using. So the value of the variable will be included within this main string. Since we have used square brackets for inter, uh, string interpolation, we get result like a company name is Coca-Cola. Whereas if you use braces like this, then you will get a company name is single quotes Coca-Cola. So for braces, single quotes will be added on both sides of the variable value. Not only variables, we can use expressions also. Example, in this string interpolation, we have a arithmetic calculation, amount value plus tax minus discount. So that result will be maintained within this string. And not only arithmetic operations, we can use functions also, library function, example, example to upper. That is converting company name into uppercase letters that will be included in this main string. Next, control statements. This is the simple example of if statement. You can see if statement, the keyword if followed by a logical condition. That equal operator is logical comparison operator. It is not assignment operator. So here we are comparing the value of global variable GV1 with a value 12. If global variable also contains a value 12, then condition will be satisfied. Otherwise, it will become false. This statement print God is great will be displayed only if the condition is true. If condition is false, nothing will happen. Whereas in the second example, we provided both true logic and false logic. So print God is great become, belongs to true part. Print evil is bad belongs to false part. So depending upon the result of the condition, any one of these two statements will be executed. But in each part, we have only one statement. If you want to execute multiple statements, they can be combined into a block. Example, here, true part contains two statements. They combine into one single block of statements with the begin and keywords. Similarly, false part also contains a block of statements with two statements. In the fourth example, we have used a while loop, while condition, a block of statements. Now this block of statements will be executed repeatedly as long as the condition is true. When condition becomes false, it will terminate the loop and it tries to execute the rest of the program. So this is how control statements can be used in data services scripting. And user defined functions. We can create our own functions. Example, if you want to create a function to accept two integer parameters as input and to interchange their values. Interchanging values is called swapping. So we can create a function with the name swap and it should be created with the two input output parameters. Dollar $a is integer parameter and it is input output parameter. That means it can act like both the input as well as output. For this requirement, we require input output parameters. $B is also integer input output parameter. And we need a return parameter. It is mandatory for every function. Here I am trying to return null value. So null is of type integer. So return parameter is mentioned as integer. And to interchange the values, we require a third variable. Temporary variable is required. So such type of local variables also we can create dollar temp is the local variable. Now with the help of these parameters and variables we can prepare the function body. Example dollar temp equal to dollar a that is one statement assignment statement dollar a equal to dollar b dollar b equal to dollar temp. With these three statements logic like this we can interchange the values of a and b. 
Finally, we can use a return statement to return the required value. In this case, it is null value. Once a function is created like this a swap function, you can call this function as if it is a library function from job or workflow, data flow or within transformation mappings. From several places, we can call this function. Another example, function to accept three integer numbers as input and to return their total and average as output. So here the function name that I am trying to create is average and we require three input parameters n1, n2 and three integer parameters and we need two output parameters total and average. Average is of type decimal so because when we try to find the average value we get a fractional value as a result and uh, return parameter is mandatory. We don't need any local variables for this logic. Directly we can calculate total and average. So in the function body total equal to n1 plus n2 plus n3 average equal to total divided by 3 and finally return statement to return the value. This is how simple programming features like control statements, functions, expressions can be used inside scripting.